technology, new tools. In this lesson, you will load software into line replaceable units. You will see examples of normal and non-normal data loads. These are times when you might load new software. First, you will do a normal data load. You need to update the navigation database in the left Ames cabinet. Go to the flight deck and load this software. get in the disk drive. software into the standard CPM. Add the LRU to the selected destinations list. Very good. Notice that all the selected LRUs for the data load are now listed together in the selected destinations window. Now let's load the data to the selected LRUs. Select continue. 
The LRUs you selected show here on the main data load screen. These are the LRUs that will receive the new software. The system configuration for all the selected LRUs shows here. To load data, first select the destination and then select the source that has the related software for that destination. The first LRU must be selected for the data load. Select the standard CPM for the left aims. Now the Select Source button is active. This button will give you the available software to use for the data load. Select Select Source. This is the Select Source window. There are three sources available. Software can be loaded from the hard drive, the disk drive, or from a CD-ROM. The software update is on the disk drive. Select it. A list of software part numbers shows here. Select part number BE4-0106-001. The Add button is now active. This button will put the part number in the selected part numbers list window. Add this part to the list. Now the Continue button is active. If needed, you can now add additional software part numbers to the selected part numbers window, or you can continue with the data load procedure. The standard CPM also needs software update 316F-HNP-002-09. Add this part to the list. Continue. Very good. Now go back to the main data load screen. The selected updates or part numbers for the standard CPM show in the data source window. Notice that these are for the left aims only. The selection of software updates for the remaining LRU is done in the same way. When this procedure is done, the data source window will show only the selected updates or part numbers for the right aims system. When there is at least one software part for each destination LRU, this message will appear and you can start the data load. Next, let's look at how to remove items from the main data load screen. To remove a part number, select it. And then use the Delete Source button. To remove an LRU from the destination list, select the LRU, and then use the Delete Destination button. Now let's look at the Batch Load function. The Batch Load function eliminates the need to manually select destination and source. Select Batch. The Select Batch file screen shows. You can select the source, and then a list of available batch files show for that selection. This information specifies all the LRUs and software part numbers. In this case, four batch files are available. Notice each batch file has its own part number. Select the batch file with part number 3178-VAT-BAA-13. Select Continue. All the LRUs specified in the batch file show here on the main data load screen. And all the software part numbers show here. Let's see what happens if you select Show Status. When you use the Show Status button, the Load Status Summary screen shows. It lists all the selected destinations and software part numbers here, while the current status of each software part number shows here. Okay, let's start the data load. The instruction tells you the system is ready to start the data load. You can start all data loads with a single start button selection. Start the data load. 
As the data load starts, this screen appears to show the progress of the data load. The Show Status button is still available during the data load. The current status of each software part number shows. The status is updated as the data load progresses. After all the data is loaded in the LRUs, the system performs a validation check. The data load is now complete. All destination LRUs show the new configuration. Just replace the error data inertial reference unit. The removal installation procedure requires you to load software. This software is not on a diskette. It is in the mass storage device. Go to the data load display. Okay. When you use software from the mass storage device, you should select the destination first. Now select the source. Since you selected the destination first, only the part numbers that apply to the destination show. Select the correct part number. Before you continue, select Show More Data. Now the list of part numbers shows all the part numbers in the mass storage device. Select Show Less Data, and the list shows only the part numbers for the ADIRS. Select Show Less Data to show only the part numbers that apply to the ADIRS. The source is now selected. Continue the data load procedure. The airplane is already in this configuration. The ADARU did not respond to the request to start the data load. You replaced the ADARU. Did you forget to push in the circuit breaker? Make sure the ADARU has power. The circuit breaker is open. Try the data load again. The data load is in progress. The ADARU is now restarting. Make sure this is the correct configuration, and then finish the data load. Great! You loaded the ADARU. Notice the new part number shows. You restarted a data load after the destination LRU did not respond. In the next example, you will see another type of problem. received a service bulletin to update the software for the air supply cabin pressure controllers. Here is the diskette with the software. Go to the flight deck and load this software.
put the diskette in the disk drive. Load the software into the left ASCPC first. Do this to select the ATA system. Continue the procedure. The airplane is in this configuration. Continue the data load procedure. The data load system stopped. It detects that the software in the right ASCPC is different than the part number you are now trying to load in the left ASCPC. When you update the right ASCPC, both will have the same part number, so it is okay to select override. The data load continues. is now complete. The software part number of the left ASCPC shows. Make sure this is correct, then continue. Notice the new part number for the left ASCPC shows. Now load the right ASCPC. You change the destination to the right ASCPC. Continue the procedure. The airplane is in this configuration, so you can continue. The data load is in progress. Right ASCPC is now restarting. The new configuration shows. Make sure this is the correct configuration and then continue. The software is now loaded. Notice the new part number shows.